other ones, pravastatin is seen as being gentler than atorvastatin. So again, we'd give it at night. Its dose is between 10 to 40 milligrams. And the main scenario that we would give someone pravastatin is if they have a raised cholesterol, they've tried 10 milligrams of atorvastatin, so the minimal dose of atorvastatin, and they're getting side effects from it, so maybe muscle aches, and they really don't want to take it because of this muscle aches, we might change them then to the lowest dose of pravastatin, 10 milligrams. Uh, and it's generally seen that pravastatin is slightly gentler as far as side effects are concerned than atorvastatin. Finally, then there is another drug called rosuvastatin, that is used. Its dose ranges between 5 and 40 milligrams and again we would give it once at night and I really don't know which of these actually that need to be taken at night and which need to be taken in the day. I know these two. This one has to be taken at night, simvastatin. If you take it in the morning it doesn't work because its half-life is too short uh, so it will all have left the bloodstream by the time the evening comes around and the liver's actually producing the most cholesterol. This one has a much longer half-life and therefore it could be given in the morning and still have effect at the time when the liver is producing the most cholesterol during the night. I don't know about pravastatin and rosuvastatin, but I would just prescribe them and tell people to take them at the night, in the night time anyway. So rosuvastatin can be given at doses between 5 and 40 milligrams. It is phenomenally expensive. It's about 20 times more expensive than the other three. So we don't often prescribe it the situation where we would prescribe it is, one, if someone isn't tolerating the other one. So let's say someone was initially put on the torvastatin, they couldn't tolerate it due to muscle aches, so they were moved on to 10 milligrams of pravastatin. If they then come back and tell you they've still got muscle aches, that they really don't want to take pravastatin, then you might move them on to 5 milligrams of rosuvastatin, and that would be seen as the one that is least likely of all the statins to cause side effects, 5 milligrams of rosuvastatin. That's one situation in which you would prescribe rosuvastatin. The other situation is if someone has got horrific hypercholesterolemia, let's say they've got a cholesterol level of 8.5 or something like that, they have been put on maximum dose of torvastatin, 80 milligrams. They are tolerating it, but it has not brought down their cholesterol adequately. Let's say their cholesterol is still 6, despite 80 milligrams of atorvastatin. In that situation, you might move them onto 40 milligrams of rosuvastatin, because 40 milligrams of rosuvastatin is generally seen as being even more powerful than 80 milligrams of atorvastatin. So those are the two situations where I would consider prescribing rosuvastatin. One, lack of tolerance of the other ones, in which case you put them on minimal dose rosuvastatin, to lack of efficacy of maximum dose of Torva, in which case I would consider changing them onto rosuvastatin. Now, that pretty much concludes this video. That's all I really wanted to say. Just some final information before we end the video. There are other cholesterol-lowering medications besides the statins. They are nowhere near as effective and they often have similar side effect profiles to statins. However, if someone really cannot tolerate any of the statins uh, because of muscle aches, so let's say you've gone through a Torva, Prava, and Rosuva statin, all at minimal doses, and they are still getting muscle aches on that 5 milligrams of Rosuva statin, then they may be put on a drug called ezetimibe that can also lower cholesterol level and is less likely to cause muscle aches than the statins. However, it's still known to cause muscle aches, ezetimibe, but for some reason these cholesterol-lowering drugs are really not nice to muscle cells, um, but it is less likely than any of the statins to cause muscle aches. The reason we don't use it that much is because it's nowhere near as effective at lowering your cholesterol level as the statins. The other situation in which we might use ezetimibe is if... Um, if someone's on a very high dose of a statin and they're still hypercholesterolemic, but they don't want to increase the dose of the statin any further. So an example might be, let's say they're on 40 milligrams of a torvastatin, but that is the maximum dose that they can tolerate of a torvastatin. They don't want to go up to 80 milligrams, but their cholesterol is still far too high. Then we might put them on dual therapy, a statin plus ezetimibe. The other example is if they were on maximum dose of Torva and their cholesterol was still far too high, then you could put them on a Torva and ezetimibe rather than putting them on rosuvastatin. Uh, that would probably be cheaper in actual fact than putting them on rosuvastatin because rosuvastatin is so expensive. 
or maybe they're on 40 milligrams of rosuvastatin already and their cholesterol is still too high, then you could put them on ezetimibe as well as the rosuvastatin. So it can be used as dual therapy or as alternative therapy if they really are not tolerating the statin. Um, so that's another drug, a cholesterol-lowering drug that you may well see, ezetimibe. So with that, we will end this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something.